you all for being here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. So this is, um, I know Denise mentioned the previous QR code. This QR code is for UCI specifically. So if you do have um, your phone handy, feel free to pull it out, take a picture of this QR code and it will lead you to a link for UC Irvine specifically that will capture more of your information and will allow us to continue to keep in touch with you. I'll bring this link or this QR code back up later on and I'll also post the link um, through the chat function to be able to, or sorry, through the Q&A function to be able to give you the link itself if you don't have it already. Um, but with that being said, thank you so much again, all of you for being here. My name is Kimberly Macias. I am a senior admissions counselor at UC Irvine. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And I am also a proud Imperial Valley native. So I was born and raised in Imperial Valley. And I graduated from Imperial High School a couple years ago. I'm not gonna say how long, <laughs> but a couple years ago. And then I went on to pursue my undergraduate degrees at UC Irvine. So this is my alma mater. And I graduated with a degree in psychology and social behavior and another in education sciences. I then went on to pursue my master's in education with a concentration in higher ed at Cal State Fullerton. And now I'm happy to be back working at my alma mater as an admissions counselor for UC Irvine. And again, so happy to be with you all and be a resource uh, through your application process. So thank you again. And with that, we'll get started. So UC Irvine is part of the UC system. So what that means is that we're part of the nine undergraduate campuses that share the same, the same overall values. Um, UC is a research university. So what that means is that the UC teaches you to think through critical questions in the field and they, they teach you how to use creativity, research and complex problem solving skills to answer the questions that you want to propose in those research topics, which we'll talk more about a little later. Um, so what do you need to know about the UC system? As I mentioned, we are nine undergraduate campuses and we have one set of requirements. We'll go over those a little later. But the application, how it works is that we have one application for all of the UCs and you get to select which campuses you wanna to apply to. So you see right here, the map of all of the nine UCs you're able to apply to as an undergrad. And you can, through the application process, you will choose which ones you wanna do. So let's just say you only want to apply to the ones that are closest to home. You would, you would select UCLA, UC Irvine, UCSD, and UC Riverside, right? Since those are the ones closest to home. That's what I did because I was scared to go a little further than that. <laughs> so I applied to those four UCs and that's how you do it. It would be through that one application. Um, and then of course, if you want to apply to more than that, you would click on the, all of the other ones. I'm not saying you only have to apply to those, right? But those are, this is what it looks like. The map looks like of the UCs and how we're all spread out throughout California. Um, lastly, I would also like to mention in this slide is to apply broadly. This increases your chances of admissions. If you're applying broadly, what that means is don't only apply to the ones that um, are seen as like the most competitive UCs, right? So apply broadly, apply to um, the ones you are able to apply to and have the opportunity to apply to. Um, what, whether that means if you get a fee waiver and you get to apply to four, but your um, grandmother wants to give you money to apply to a fifth one, then go ahead and take um, that opportunity to apply more broadly and apply to another institution, right? Um, so when trying, when considering which UCs to apply to, there are three things that we tell students to consider. And this would be their academic program, so their majors, the size of the institution and the location, which I already talked a little more about the, the location earlier, so I'll, I'll jump into that first. So when I was applying to the, to universities in general, I wanted to be somewhere where I was like close to home, but like not too close. Um, so that was something that I considered when I applied to the UCs was the location of how far I was going to be from Imperial Valley and how far, um, how long it would take for me to come home 
over the weekends or if it was someone's birthday and I wanted to come home and celebrate with my family, how far would I be, right? So that's one of the things we um, ask students to consider when they're applying to the, UC, the UCs because they're, it does make a difference into what your experience is going to look like being far or close to home, whatever it is you prefer and you feel that is best for you. The next thing is academic programs, so majors. This is different at all UCs. So each UC has their unique set of majors and I'll talk more about UCIs later, but that is something that we ask you to look into is what do their academic programs look like for a specific major? Do I have to submit an, an additional application like a supplemental application? All of that are things to consider when selecting which major you wanna go into. And lastly is size. So the UCs again vary by size and you will notice that like the biggest UC would be like UC Berkeley that has like an undergraduate student enrollment of approximately 41,000, over 41,000 students or something that may be like smaller, maybe UC Santa Cruz with like 19,000 overall undergraduate students. So it just depends on what you want to see and what experience you want to get out of the university. I know it can be a total um, shock, right, to be in somewhere as small as like Imperial Valley and then go into somewhere really big like the university that has thousands of students um, all attending at the same time. And it, it can be overwhelming, right? So those are things that we definitely ask you to consider when you are selecting which schools to apply to specifically for the nine UCs. So going further into UCI specifically, although we are sort of a new university compared to our, our siblings, compared to some of the other UCs, we were founded in 1965. Um, and even then we have ranked and we have um, come across as like one of the best uh, institutions in the nation. So you will be learning from and amongst the best and brightest in the world at UCI. So UCI is currently ranked number nine among public universities and number 36 among all, so both public and private universities nationwide, according to the US News and World Report. And we are also ranked the number one best college in the nation by Money Magazine. Um, and this UCI is actually the first public institution to top the publication's annual rankings. And something else I will point out is that we are also part of the AAU, which is not on this slide, but I wanna talk a little further about it because UCI is the youngest of only 65 universities in the US and Canada to be elected into membership of AAU. And what AAU is Association of American Universities and they pretty much provide funding for research for students. And so we're very proud to share that we are the youngest of the 65 universities in the US and Canada to be a part of the AAU. So next, um, like I mentioned, UCI was founded in 1965. And at UCI, we believe in the infinitely curious. So our students are those students that are the thinkers, the dreamers, the courageous of thought. They're inspiring, they're motivated, and they care about the world around them. So they care to give back to their communities. If this sounds like, oh, that's totally me, then this is where you belong. Um, student success at a glance at UCI is that the students are able to get um, the resources and uh, support needed for them to succeed throughout their undergraduate career. So looking at, looking at what this looks like at UCI is that over, we have over 30,000 undergraduate students, over 6,000 graduate students, and our one year retention rate is of a 93%. That means that 93% of our students move on to their second year. And then four year graduation and six year graduation rates at 68 and 83% respectively. And this is higher than the national uh, average. So the six year graduation rate for um, public institutions on a national average would be 60%. And we're proud to be 23% more than that. So to have students that are able to graduate from our, not only remain in our institution, but succeed through and graduate uh, through our institution. 
So something we get asked a lot is, so where is Irvine? Like you're telling me you went to one of the closer, quote unquote, UCs to the valley, but where is Irvine? So Irvine is located approximately three to three and a half hours away from Imperial Valley. So we are in between, I know you all are probably more familiar with like San Diego and LA. So we're actually right in the middle of San Diego and LA and we're close to the beach. We have ideal weather with 281 sunny days per year. So, you know, if you are used to the heat in Imperial Valley, it's actually a lot cooler in Irvine. And we are close to the beach, like I mentioned, we're about 10 minutes away. I'll show you later a slide that shows um, how, how close you can see the campus and the beach. Um, we're also close to Disneyland, other companies. And so I'll share more about what that looks like. So there's a lot of things to do in Orange County. I know one of the questions was like, what do students like to do on the weekends? Um, something that is great about UCI is that students are able to take on anything um, what, that they'd like over the weekend. So we have a lot of shopping centers, there's free concerts. UC Irvine hosts specifically free concerts for students at their Aldrich Park, which I'll talk more about later. Um, Disneyland, a lot of students like to go to downtown Disney. Some students like to hang out in our park in the center of our campus, which again, I'll show you more about later. But definitely a lot to do in Orange County in general and in Irvine and the surrounding community. So looking at what um, opportunities are available for students going to UCI. So I don't know if you have all heard of the Silicon Valley, but this is located in San Jose, which is like Northern California Bay Area, like far, right? Um, UCI has actually been coined as like the next Silicon Beach, according to the LA Times. And this is in comparison to Silicon Valley because of the size and value of the technical or technology community at in Irvine specifically. So here are some of the companies that partner with, not partner, but like have students from UCI usually get internships at these institutions or in the end, because of their internship, they get a job or students um, seek out opportunities at these companies specifically because they provide, they want to get students from UC Irvine because they know what they have been learning throughout um, their UC experience um, enriches the and enhances the opportunities in the workplace through any of the companies um, shown here. So next, I know I mentioned the location of Irvine specifically. So you will see this, um, I hope you can see my mouse, but um, this area, this little circle is like our campus with what these buildings are and literally right here is the Pacific Ocean 10 minutes away so nearby um, beaches would be like Newport Beach, Huntington Beach, Corona del Mar, Costa Mesa, all of those nearby beaches are the ones that you um, have like right in your backyard. A lot of students also like to rent out um, places with their friends where they all live together in like beachside Newport Beach right and those are just some experiences that you're able to get at UC Irvine. So going more into that little circle I was uh, trying to point out earlier, this is a layout of what our campus looks like. And if there's something that you may notice about it is that it's in the form of a circle. So Irvine and UCI were both strategically designed when they were built over 50 years ago to make it easy to get around the campus and Overall, it was also to kind of like allow for that collaboration between the different schools and departments. So you'll see that the School of Social Sciences is next to the School of Social Ecology. And this allows for like um, the different departments to communicate with each other and to work more collaboratively. And well, overall, an added bonus is that you won't get lost, right? I remember my first year at UCI, I was walking to class I literally missed the building for my first class and I didn't know what to do because here I was first year student, don't know what I'm doing and I miss the building. So I just kept going in the circle. Eventually I found my class and I got to it on time because I gave myself a good amount of time to get to class. 
but eventually I was able to find it. And this is like an added bonus or like positive thing of like the layout of our campus is that you will never get lost because as you keep going in a circle, eventually you will find um, where you need to go for your classes. So I mentioned the academic uh, units or academic departments that um, collaborate and that are around the circle. But to talk more about like the academic life at UCI, the average classroom size for students is approximately 68% of classes have less than 30 students and 77% have less than 50 students. So I remember my biggest class was a lecture of about 300 and something students. But with a lecture, you also get a discussion section where you get like a like 30 students or so, maybe less, most of the time less than 30, where you get a more specific um, discussion with like your classmates and your TA to be able to talk more through the material. The faculty to student ratio at UCI is of an 18 to one. And overall UCI values and encourages um, students to succeed through collaboration. And that is why we have our newly built um, at Eater Learning Pavilion. So this active, uh, this learning pavilion gives you like the opportunity to switch like your desks um, around and like your chairs, move your chairs. So it's not a traditional lecture style hall that you typically see. It allows for collaboration and for students to be talking uh, amongst each other about different topics or whether the professor wants to um, have like a little group work for five minutes. They're able to do that in the at Eater Learning Pavilion, which to me is something that is great because it encourages you to collaborate and think of maybe things that you hadn't thought of before about the material by talking to your classmates. So UC Irvine offers over 85 majors and over 70 minors. And I do want to let you all know, or kind of point you to our list of majors. Because we do have an extensive um, amount of majors, it is important for you to look at which major you want to apply to um, for admissions purposes. And I'll talk more about like what it means to select your major in just a bit. But um, just as an FYI is something that I want to point out is to really visit our majors um, website to look into what is each but to give you a pretty much overview of what the majors look like um, compared to other institutions instead of having like large colleges like the College of Letter and Sciences or things like that we have academic units or academic schools. Um, that have academic advisors with specialized knowledge in that specific field. So for example, you will find a major in sociology or political science in the School of Social Sciences. And in that school, there's gonna be a set of specific academic advisors that can help you in choosing which classes are best fit for you to graduate on time and get the most out of your experience at UC Irvine. And with that, aside from the academic advisors, I mentioned how there's that academic counseling component. So every undergraduate student is assigned to the school or major that is offered. And then you're able to receive one on one appointments with your academic counselor. And this includes like them giving you like an educational planner for the rest of your time at UCI or letting you know which classes fit in which requirements. So you're able to have options when choosing which classes you want to take. And some of the other ones uh, are our LARC. So that's pretty much like our tutoring center. Um, it's like peer to peer collaboration among students. So if a student has already taken, taken a course, they become like uh, tutors for students who are now taking the course and they can teach them more about what they learned in their experience through the course. And then we have our undeclared advising program, which is very unique and it assists new first year students who have not yet declared a major into exploring more of the options available and at the end of their second year um, being able to declare a major and then lastly i'll point out our writing and community our center for excellence in writing and communication where students can take their essays and their papers for their classes and a graduate student or professor sit in at the writing center and they are able to like peer review your essays for your courses before you submit your final draft. 
So we talked more about the academic resources. So now going into student services, we have a wide variety of um, student services offered. And this is because we are proud to be of a supportive and nurturing environment for all students. So this includes like our trio scholars that I wanna highlight, um, our summer bridge program, summer edge program, which are programs that you enter before your first year at UCI. Um, our fire scholars, which is um, for our former foster youth students. Our transfer student hub, so that's like for our transfer students. The gateway initiative, um, which is our gateway scholars, is for first gen students. And our dream scholars, which is our undocumented, on undocumented student population. All of these are great um, student support services that are offered at UCI for you all to take advantage of. And they are free of charge, always available for our students at UCI. So now going into what diversity and inclusion looks like at UCI. UCI was ranked number six in the US for awarding bachelor's degrees to minority students. And this is a breakdown of the undergraduate race and ethnicity of our students. Um, we do offer a lot of centers, which I'll go into in the next slide, uh, that affirm and develop your cultural identities and they support students in increasing equity across the campus. So it's not just like, oh, yay, we're ranked number six in the U.S. We also do provide those resources and that support for students to be able to succeed. So I'll, this is a list of like um, the student resources that are offered for identity based resources. So Send the, the Center for Black Cultures, Resources and Research, the Cross-Cultural Center, Disability Services Center, International Center, LGBT Resource Center, the Latinx Resource Center is one of our newest centers and it was actually advocated by students that there was a need for a Latinx Resource Center to exist on campus and that's how it all got started and now there is one at UCI. So the power of students and their um, desire to get more of those resources definitely helps our campus to grow and to be able to provide um, that support that is needed by students. And I'll also talk more about our first gen initiatives. The first gen students are able to have like men, uh, be part of a mentorship program with first gen faculty. So faculty who were also the first in their family to graduate from college and they have a book loan program and other services that overall just help enhance the experience at UCI for students. So going into um, more of our opportunities offered on campus, we do have our undergraduate research opportunities program. And it is a great way for to get professional experience on campus while working with um, fellow undergraduate students, graduate students, and professors or uh, faculty. And since there are less than 7,000 graduate students at UC Irvine, undergrad students get the opportunity to get more hands-on experience in research. I remember when I was in high school, I was like, huh, like, what do you mean research? I, I don't know how to do that. I literally thought that this is what it meant is to have someone with a lab coat with goggles. And that, I thought that that was what research was, right? I was wrong. So research is open to all and any majors. And as a social ecology and education um, major, I was still able to get uh, an opportunity to do my own research in something that I was interested in. And I had a faculty mentor, which was one of my um, professors who guided me through the research. And best of all, I was given grants. So I was given money, free money, for me to pay for all of the expenses for my research uh, project. So my project focused on comparing uh, support services in something specific for compared Imperial County to Orange County. And so I was paid for like my travel, I was paid for all of the expenses, like my printing, anything that I needed, I was paid for through the grant, through the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. And overall, more than 73% of students participate in research before they graduate, me being one of them, and I thought that that would never happen, right? So just another opportunity for you to have at UCI. And with that, we also have our study abroad um, offices. At the moment, of course, this looks different because of COVID, so everything is suspended at the moment for study abroad. However, um, 
We do offer different opportunities for students in over 30 countries, over 300 international programs, and we have four in-nation um, internship and satellite programs, which are UCDC, the New York um, program, the Sacramento program, et cetera, that give you the opportunity to get, um, to expand your worldview as like the slide says, and to get more um, knowledge and information outside of just the institution. So UCI students, we love to have fun both on campus and off campus. We host a variety of activities and concerts, as I mentioned earlier, throughout the year. And we also currently hold three Guinness World Records for the largest dodgeball game, um, the largest water blaster fight, and the largest game of capture the flag. So these were all UCI students who participated and helped in co or contributed to us still having um, those world records. And this is a yearly tradition um that is done at uci that we we like to break world records <laughs> and in getting involved on campus that was something that was very important to me going into uci was finding a community within um the institution so you will find over 600 student organizations are at uc irvine but you will find your community and, and your special your interests that you want to further develop through one of the student organizations. So this uh, this includes like our um, fraternity and sorority life, and we also have a huge dance community. We have um, special interests, cultural, professional, academic um, clubs and organizations that you can join and that are open for students to. Um, be able to take advantage of and they you will also find them around kind of like how this picture shows around um, the circle just uh, boothing and like wanting to get students more involved in their specific um, club or organization so typically we host the fall at eater involvement fair um, during the week before instruction starts however because of COVID-19 um, the fall 2020 involvement fair will be hosted virtually so students can still get acclimated and involved with the campus and the campus organizations will still be having their own booths virtually for students to get more information about um, their specific club or organization. So looking into sports and rec, we do have, um, we are a NCAA Division I sports um, school, and we have 18 sports, nine for men and nine for women. These include basketball, volleyball, soccer, track and field, um, water polo. I lost count of which ones I already said, but there's nine for men, nine for women. We hope we have over, or sorry, we have 28 national titles and 64 individual titles. And as a division one school, we hope to see all of our students at our games. However, in this current climate, any sports games will not be hosting an audience for fall 2020. So although this is offered for students for the time being, um, the audience is not able to attend the sports activities. Um, and going into campus life and what that looks like for housing and dining, um, we for fall 2020 we have single occupancy dorms and rooms where one student is assigned to a room and a restroom for themselves just for uh precautions and for safety and following cdc orders that is what we are doing for this year and all students are given a thermometer and training and dining is available as well for students but this would be outside until the indoor dining restrictions are lifted. So that's what we're doing at the moment with um, COVID-19. However, for first year students, there are two freshman uh, housing communities and this are Mesa Court and Middle Earth and they have their own like themes. Uh, so let's just say you're interested in STEM, but even though you're not a STEM major, but you're interested in STEM, you might want to apply to Mesa Court's interest in STEM hall, right? So then you will uh, share the hall with other students who are also interested in STEM. And same goes for all of the other themed halls. If you're a first gen student and you want to have, or you want to be in a hall where there are other first gen students, that might be something you want to apply to, right? So it just depends on your interest. And I would recommend taking a virtual tour of the housing facilities 
um, to see our, our newest uh, Middle Earth towers and also our Mesa Court towers and all of the halls, you'll be able to get a virtual experience through the link that is provided at the bottom of the slide. So I told you a lot about like what it looks like, what UCI is and what it looks like, right? But now let's get more into how do you apply to the institution? So the application is currently open. It opened August 1st. So you are able to go into universitycalifornia.edu slash apply and begin filling out your application, which I totally recommend for you to do is to begin filling it out now. And however, you won't be able to submit until November 1st. So the month from November 1st through the 30th is when you would actually submit your application. You will find out whether you've been admitted in March and you would have to submit your SIR, which says like, this is a campus I'm going to um, by May 1st. And then if you are admitted, you would have to submit your final transcripts by July 1st. Um, so that's what the application timeline looks like for UCI. And this typically applies to all the UCs as well. And there is a fee of $70 for residents and 80 for non-resident, uh, non-California resident students to apply per campus. So if you were to choose four, then you would have to do 70 times four, 280. That's what you would have to pay to apply to four UCs. And then looking at like, okay, cool. I know how to apply, but what do I need to meet in order to apply? You would need to meet the minimum UC GPA of a 3.0 for California residents, 3.4 for non-residents, and you would also have to meet your A through G course requirements. In the past, um, the UC also required students to submit their SAT or ACT scores with the writing component. However, as an update for testing, UC Irvine will not be using the SAT or ACT exams for our comprehensive review, selection, or scholarships process. However, these exams and as well as like your subject exams, you can use them for class placements or towards uh, meeting graduation requirements. So I talked about like the exam. So now the A through G's, this is, I'm sure you are all familiar with the A through G requirements, so I won't go as much in depth, but do know that these are, that you have to complete the 15 A through G courses with grades of a C or better um, for, for them to be meeting the minimum requirement to be able to apply to the UCs. Um, and these are other options for satisfying your A through G courses. So for example, let's just say you are missing one of the, um, you're missing like the visual and performing arts, the letter F requirement. You can use any of these options to fulfill them. So you can use an online course, you can use an exam. So let's just say you took the AP art exam and you got a score of a three or better, that would count for a year of your A through G courses being met, right? So these are all just options in case you aren't able to meet the A through G requirements through your high school coursework. And how we calculate um, GPA, this, the GPA looks like interesting for UC students because you think of like, well, why am I not, why am I going to try in my ninth grade courses if they're not gonna look at it? We are going to look at it. So it's not calculated into your GPA. However, when we see your application, we do still look at your um, freshman year courses. However, we do understand that it's a transition from middle or junior high, uh, junior high school into high school. So we want to be able to give you um, the opportunity to be uh, more acclimated with a high school setting before we uh, count it into your GPA. And then obviously the senior year courses, you don't have them yet because you are um, applying in your senior year. So you wouldn't have that added component yet. And these are, this usually applies to our international students or students who have coursework from non-native English speaking countries. So typically this wouldn't apply to um, you all, but if this is you, these, this would be a way um, to fulfill the English language proficiency. Okay, so next we talked about, we talked about like what it means to have the minimum requirements, right? But it takes, the first step in becoming 
um, an anteater in going to UCI is to meet admissions requirements and then apply. So this is what you will need to know. So all the UCs have the same minimum requirements, but we all have different um, eligibility versus selection is like a different thing. So to be eligible, you have to have all that you see on the left row, but to be selected, it's different because that would differ by um, campus. So the selection process is determined through the comprehensive review process for UC Irvine specifically, we have a holistic comprehensive review where we consider all the different factors um, that I'll show you later for admissions. So next, I know it's not Halloween yet, but I'm gonna show you a slide that typically students, it's, it's we call it the scary slide, right? Because it is scary. Um, UC Irvine did receive over 122,000 applications this past cycle, which um, for freshmen specifically, there were 97,943 applications from those students uh, 29,302 were admitted into UCI, which brought our overall admissions rate to a 29.9%. And from those 29,000 students, 7,037 students actually um, accepted their admission into UCI. So 7,037 students are the ones that actually are incoming into their first year in a couple weeks, right? So. It is a scary slide and I do want to showcase how it is competitive, right? But there are other things that you can do to be able to be competitive in your application process. And I'll talk a little more about what that looks like later, but I do want to be very transparent in showing you the numbers and what that looks like um, for our past class. And of course, this may differ for your class, but Again, just being transparent with what that process is like. So something that I would say is knowing to choose your major. So research the institution. UCI, like I mentioned earlier, has more than 85 majors. And this includes like undergraduate undeclared, which you can apply to if you don't have a major of choice yet. So when filling out the UC application, make sure you select a primary major and an alternate major because for UC Irvine, if we can't offer you admission into your primary major, we may be able to consider you for admission into your alternate major. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, academic advisors in each of the 14 schools can help you plan your course schedule, help you with double majoring, minoring. Like I mentioned, I was a double major at UCI. My advisors helped me in navigating that. And all of that is a process that you will get assistance for um, when you are at the institution. But for application purposes, I definitely recommend researching all of the different majors that UCI has to offer. So for our highly selective majors, these are majors that a lot of students um, apply to, would be our nursing science, game design and interactive media, business admin, and psychology as a bachelor of science. Um, these are usually the ones that students mostly apply to. For our interdisciplinary majors, um, we have bi uh, biology and education, computer science and engineering, environmental science and policy, and criminology, law and society. So all of these majors have two different schools pretty much that are partnering together to create one major. I'll highlight, for example, biology education, where you where you graduate with a bachelor of science in biology or biological sciences, and you also get um, your teaching credential through for a single subject teaching in biology through this specific major. Um, and then the similar but different, something we get asked a lot is if we have a kinesiology major. Unfortunately, we don't, but the one that is most um, similar to it would be exercise science. So um, the other ones that you'll see that are like similar but different are psychological science, film and media studies, and literary journalism. The psychological science is similar to a, psych a psychology major, but this one's more focused on like social development as opposed to like neurological brain function. And oops, so sorry. And the film and media studies and literary, literary journalism, usually when they're put together, create more of the communications um, component 
or communications major. So someone is asking if I can talk more about the Criminology Law and Society major, and of course I can. The CLS is how I um, like to say the CLS major is an interdisciplinary major that focuses on the problem of the crime and understanding the social, cultural, political, all the ec all of the external uh, forces that interact with the law. So some of like your basic courses um, will give you like an overview of the legal system and an emphasis on like criminal and ju uh, juvenile justice, um, criminal behavior, things like that. And then like your more, I guess like upper division level courses um, will provide a deeper understanding of like the causes and the uh, consequences of crime, the criminal justice policy, theory, all of those um, other more in-depth components. Thank you so much for that question. And then someone asked, are any of your majors impacted? So at UC Irvine, we don't um, have impacted majors. That's typically something you see in the CSUs. Um, I would say that we do have um, our highly selective majors though. So that would be like the list that you see on the left, which is nursing science, game design, and interactive media, business admin, and psychology. And I will get to some more of your questions in a bit, but thank you so much for the great, great questions that you're asking. Um, so I talked about comprehensive review and what that looks like for our campus. So we look, overall, we look for success. So we value different measures of achievement and of promise. And we look at all of these um, through your application process. So this includes not only like your academics, which are important, but we also consider other things like um, performance in activities or special projects that you took on, extracurricular activities, clubs, organizations, special talents, all of that is considered um, in the admissions process. So this is to give you a list. This is what our comprehensive review looks like. So the UC comprehensive review is based on 14 faculty decided factors. Um, and these are the 14 for UCI specifically. And you will see that each UC will have a different one because they're decided by the faculty at their campus. So this is UC Irvine specifically. These are the things that we look at when we review your applications. And that includes the personal insight questions. So um, for the personal insight questions, you have an, op or an option of eight questions. You have to choose four and all of your questions are equal. So they're all given equal consideration in the application review process. So if you were to choose number one and your friend chose number two, we'll read them the same. They're equal because they are only related to you. So because we do not have the opportunity to interview students, this is a list of the eight, we want you to really express yourself through the personal insight questions and to give us more of who you are that we haven't been able to know about further based on your application. So we really want you to choose the questions that are gonna give us, again, an insight into who you are not your friend, not your mom, not your family member, not your cousin who went to the UC. We want to know who you are. So this is the opportunity for you to do so. There are a lot of helpful tips, worksheets, videos, things like that um, in the UC website that you're able to get more information on how to answer or more in-depth questions for each question that will help you answer the, um, the prompt. So, there's also an additional comment section in the UC application. There's one that is right after the academic history uh, section. And this is these the additional comment section do not have to fill out at all. Um, but if you have something that is missing that you want to include, um, this is where you would include it. So there's one section after the academic history. So this is where we want you to share information regarding your school envir environment, your grading system, or any other curriculum changes. So for example, with COVID, there are some changes in the grading system. Um, and we want you to provide that in here if there is any changes that was made because of COVID-19. And then the other section is after the personal insight questions. So this is where you would share any information about maybe unusual circumstances, um, or you can clarify other details or describe anything that you have not had the opportunity to share previously. But I would say this isn't an opportunity to answer another personal insight question. 
So let's just say you wanted to, let me go back to the slide. You really wanted to do three, four, five, six, and seven, but you were only able to do three, four, five, and six. We do not want you to enter number seven in this section. We just want you to add more um, into any, anything else that may be missing for your application. So with that being said, I want to offer the UC application help desk. So this is the application itself. If you were to have any questions, this is where you would go to get help in your questions. Um, there's the phone number that you can call from Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. They have their email that they're available and they have um, an FAQ list for you all to access as well. Um, and I want to say thank you so much for being here. I will leave this slide for you all to have access to the QR code if you weren't able to access it earlier. It's the same one. So if you already did it earlier, you do not have to do it again. But um, this is an opportunity for um, you all to stay connected with uh, UC Irvine and to just provide the information um, for us to be able to communicate with you with any updates and overall just keep in touch with you. But with that, thank you again so much for being here and I will pass it over to Todd for some questions. Yeah, Kimberly, hey, by the way, great job. And you've, you've generated a lot of questions because UCI is a very popular university with Imperial County students. Uh, a couple of them in, in not any particular order, uh, I'll throw it out to you. And by the way, I appreciate you putting that QR code up there. Uh, students can, with their phone, click on that, and, and that's a way for them to give you information so that they can stay in touch with somebody who could really answer some deep uh, questions that many of them might have. Hopefully, we'll get to them, though. Uh, is it a quick question? One student asks us the question, is it better to stay on campus or off campus, uh, especially as a freshman coming in? That's a great question. Um, you are not required to stay on campus, so if you would like, you can stay off campus. It is totally up to you. You are, however, highly recommended to stay on campus. The reason for that is because you are able to get more, um, more of the opportunities available to you are right there because you are living on campus. You get to see everything firsthand. I will say, however, again, going back to it not being required, when I went to UCI, I didn't live on campus, so I don't have that experience to share with you all, unfortunately. But I lived in an apartment that was approximately 10 minutes walking distance from UCI. So I would walk to campus every day for classes and I was still able to find my community um, at UCI through the different opportunities available. So I would say that I would definitely recommend for you to live on campus, though it's not required um, for you to do so. Being so far away from Imperial Valley, um, like I mentioned earlier, about three, three and a half hours away at the UCI campus, you're not able to commute. So, or I, at least I wouldn't recommend for you to be driving back and forth, right? Um, but that is why I would definitely um, urge you to consider living on campus. However, I know that it can also be a financial stressor. So if that is something that is a financial stressor for you too, it is not required for you to do so. Long story short. <laughs> no, we love it, good. And uh, not any particular order, just a couple I want to kind of fire at you. Uh, yeah. One of the students uh, who is maybe considering going to IVC first, uh, and but specific to those in UC Insight questions, do community college students who are transferring in, do they complete the same application? Does it have insight, uh, personal insight questions? Yeah, so the uh, personal insight questions will not be the same. So transfer students will have to have one specific question, which um, off the top of my head, I don't know what it reads, right? But they have one specific question that they have to fill, fill out, and then they get to choose three other ones from a list that they will be able to fill out. So they're not gonna be the exact same questions because they do have to have that other one that is required for them to fill out as a transfer applicant. Great, thank you. Others, uh, regarding financial aid and uh, maybe potentially scholarships, uh, is there a program, I know you touched a little bit on, on some of the application process when it comes to scholarships, how would the students apply for scholarships? Right, so the UC application itself is a scholarship application. So as you are filling out your UC application, 
there comes a section where you're you'll be able to um, select I, I believe it's up to 16 or 20 um, different things that you relate with so one of them I think I remember one of them when I was applying was like if you are a first gen student so I selected that one um, and there's various if you are a veteran or you have a family member who is a veteran select that one and that's a scholarship application in itself because based off of that, um, the UC will be able to grant you scholarships. However, aside from that, there is on-campus and off-campus uh, scholarship opportunities through our financial aid website. And I will also um, throw in there that we will soon be hosting um, financial aid specific workshops through our UCI website. So keep a lookout for that. And also, as I mentioned, if once you register through the QR code, you will receive all that information. Um, that is something that is in the works and that we are happy and excited to bring to you all soon. It's just a more, so something like this, but about financial aid specifically, and that they will be able to answer all, any and all of your questions about financial, um, financial aid, excuse me. Good, great. That just uh, that doubles down the importance of uh, downloading that QR code if you're interested at all in in UC Irvine, uh, because essentially I get the sense that that puts you on the list to get more detailed information on an ongoing basis throughout your senior year. Yes. Uh, one another quick question is uh, UC Irvine. That's a UC school. It's a very uh, prestigious university. How would you describe the academic pressure and workload? Uh, and then as a follow up to that, what support services are available for students for academics? That's a great question. I <laughs> trust me going into UC Irvine. I was scared. I was nervous. Um, like I would assume um, many of you are, but I can assure you that the workload is manageable and it and it, they do have like services provided for students to support them through their journey. So as I mentioned, the student support services, um, and I can put it up again, those um, services for students definitely help, um, like LARC tutoring and the writing uh, center. I remember I would take my essays um, for them to read and they would definitely provide feedback. However, I do like being transparent and like, it is difficult, right? It is a change and overall, a change in environment, um, but it is doable. If I did it, you can do it. And I can say that um, anyone can do it, especially with all of the resources provided um, and support services provided for you to succeed. The university wants you to succeed, right? So they will be available and able to provide you with those resources for sure. Good. Now there's a number of questions that relate to specific majors. Uh, one that came in uh, was a particular program uh, that UC has in, in the College of Education. There's a CalTeach program versus a, a master's in teaching plus a credential program. Uh, can you maybe speak to the difference of those or, or maybe a little bit more detail into those two majors? Yes, definitely. So CalTeach is a program for um, students who are undergrads at UCI in STEM majors. So this would be like science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So if you are in um, kind of that field, the STEM field in your major, um, it helps you in exploring a career in education. So in the coursework, you are able to um, learn more teaching skills. You can practice like your, the methods for teaching in the local K through 12 classrooms. And they offer, CalTeach specifically, offers opportunity for students to complete both their bachelor's degree and a California teaching credential all in their four years. So you wouldn't have to take additional years to complete um, your teaching credential. Um, you, you do, it is, they do have like a application sort of requirement. So you do have to meet with, um, you have to take certain steps. So you have to attend one of their events meet with their counselor and then connect with other students to be able to be part of CalTeach. So I would recommend visiting their site, which is calteach.uci.edu um, to be able to get more information on how to apply. But again, you do have to be a STEM undergraduate major. And the difference with the Master's of Arts in Teaching is that you will be completing your master's while also um, 
getting your teaching credential, whether that be in single or multiple subject. Um, and that would be in a 14 month span, but this would be after your bachelor's degree. So once you have completed your bachelor's degree, you can apply to this master's program. And in that program, you will be able to complete both your master's and your teaching credentials. So hope I helped um, differentiate what it means to be CalTeach or the MET uh, credential. Well, you did a great job. And I would presume that there are more detailed explanations about each of these majors uh, by logging into that QR code popping up and then yes. you, you can get them specific information about each school. Now, a lot of students, and I'll kind of end with this question and then we'll throw it back to Denise. There's, uh, there's a lot of things going on the rest of the week. So if you're a student here, uh, hang on for just a sec. We'll let you know the schedule for the upcoming days. Uh, but Kimberly, you know, and you are a great example this year, a student who, who are, who's familiar with Imperial Valley, you graduated Imperial High School, uh, and you may, I think there's a lot of sense that some students feel have a, an, a complex that maybe we don't have a lot of opportunities here in Imperial County. So how could they bolster their application to make it on par with uh, what we perceive to be uh, bigger and better high schools other places? Uh, how, how would a student do best, whether it be in this one particular question came from like a music theater, but I think that question is broad across the broad, uh, uh, the base on a lot of academic subjects. How can I, as a, as an Imperial Valley student bolster my, uh, application to be competitive with other students? Mm -hmm. That's a great, um, question, Todd. Thank you so much for asking that. I would say that a lot of, there's a lot of things that we don't consider as like, extracurricular or like involvement. So something I want to point out is, for example, a lot of students in um, Imperial Valley, we tend to um, not want to include things like babysitting our siblings, um, being involved in FFA, like things like that, that they're at, at Irvine, no one, no one knew what FFA was, right? And over here, I'm like, wait, what? That's what Imperial Valley students do. We are involved in FFA, right? Putting all of those things that you have going on outside of your academics is definitely important. I remember in my application um, showing, and I had a counselor who helped me fill this out, the same way that I hope to be a resource for you all, is um, in putting all of those things that you, no matter how minimal you think they are, they are definitely important into your application. And I mentioned like the babysitting thing because um, there are students who like take care of their siblings after hours. So that uh, conflicts with their time for doing homework or like doing other academic things, getting involved in something else. So that's something that we definitely, definitely look at and that we want you to consider if you are comfortable doing so, we want you to consider putting in your application so you are able to showcase who you are overall. Let me unmute myself here. Thank you so much, Kimberly. You have, I, I loved your presentation. I think you gave us such great information, things to consider, reminded me of things that I hadn't remembered. So I really appreciate that. Um, and everything that you do for our students locally. It's such a pleasure to have you representing UC Irvine and supporting the students of Imperial County. So thank you so much for today. I'm sure you'll be getting lots of contacts from that QR code to follow up with our students. So thanks so much for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.